What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rideshare Hub. My name is Greg. Uh, some big changes in my life recently. I am in a red Kia Soul with a car seat. I don't have a child, and no, this is not my car. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're curious about what's going on in my life and with my car, I did make a video about that. It's pretty interesting. It is something that could possibly happen to you guys. No stress. I'm good, but definitely go check that video out. Um, so what I'm doing for you guys today is, I don't know if you've heard, but Uber and Lyft drivers have an alarmingly high uh, turnover rate. It is a scary, scary number. Uh, to put it in perspective real quick, it's about 65% of males and 75% of females quit driving Uber after about six weeks. So that's a pretty whopping rate. So why is that? And honestly, why are so many people quitting now more than ever? Because that's another thing. Um, way more people after giving just one ride are inactive after a few weeks than ever before. It used to be people really got roped into doing this. Now everyone hates it. So what changed? Well, I'm going to tell you what changed. So one of the first things that I, I think has been the biggest trend on forums and all the drivers that I talk to is that it's honestly really frustrating when like a lot of us will like sell ourselves out for this and then they always cater to the passenger and like the concept of like the fact that you need just three one star ratings to be inactive and one of those could be a drunk passenger that was just messing with you and they won't rescind that rating they'll keep that rating um and then for two, like some people are, are just way too anal about what their expectations are from us as drivers. And it's like they don't take into account that, hey, I've been driving all day. I've been in traffic all day and I dealt with a bunch of a-holes and I'm trying to be a decent person right now. But my energy's off, bro. Like you can't can't expect everything of me. And um, it's like that always really frustrated me because I've had one star ratings before that I really didn't feel like I deserved and I would take it up with them. And I mean, I've, I think I had one and it was because they talked to the guy and they got him to admit that he was drunk and he shouldn't have put it. But like, if they're not going to do that, which I'd say most often than not, they won't then like, we're just screwed at that note. So I think that's really frustrating for a lot of drivers and it's basically, it's more on the note of, of we don't get taken care of at all. It's like they, they don't ever do anything for us besides Uber throws the occasional quest out that you got to work 60 hours in a weekend for. <laughs> um, I think another huge reason is honestly just burnout. Uh, I think a lot of drivers just get drained. And I understand that. I mean, I'm not really even driving right now. Uh, more due to my personal situations, but even before that I was driving less and less because I was just starting to feel really burnt out. I mean, especially if you've done it full time, it, it's a draining, it's a really draining job in the weirdest way because it's like obviously we're not, you know, in, in horse stalls shoveling crap all day, but for lack of better analogies, but um it, I can't explain it. I mean, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. It's really like mentally and emotionally draining, I feel like, with just people talking to you all day, being in traffic all day, um, you know, because like I don't get this way if I'm taking a long car ride by myself. If I had to drive to LA, let's say six hours from here, I wouldn't feel that way. I wouldn't feel like it's different. If I did six hours of Ubering versus just a six hour road trip, six hour road trips, nothing to me six hours of Ubering, I feel like I worked, you know, I, I, I want to go home and have a beer or something, you know, <laughs> then again, I a lot of times want a beer after road trips too. So who knows? So I think burnout definitely plays into it. And if you've done it for years, it really probably is just time for the change. My biggest thing is I just can't stand sitting in the car that long. And it, it makes my knees sore, my back, my neck hurts. Um, so that's why I need the little like break in my life right now more than anything. Oh man. But, um, I think another thing too is the more you do this, the more prone you are to be in an accident, to have some kind of ticket, 
or some kind of scary scenario that just kind of turns you off from driving for Uber and Lyft entirely. Um, I've never gotten a ticket while Ubering. I have been in an accident. And I know the one thing, it, was, it wasn't a scary accident at all. It didn't have a scratch on me. But the one thing I did think about, I remember that night, was like statistically we literally have better odds of being in like and hear me out I don't want to make this morbid but like we do have better odds of being in a fatal car accident than anyone else because we're on the road more often and we've got more odds of kind of running into just crazy scenarios now again I've driven for yeah three three and a half four years and I haven't had I mean, I've had, uh, on the, on my hand, I can count like three scenarios that I thought maybe I was in danger and I wasn't in all three. I just, you know, they were scary at the time. But other than that, I've had the one accident. I've been pulled over a few times, but honestly, I feel like Uber, I feel like cops think Uber drivers are like guardian angels because they're always like, oh, you're an Uber driver. Yeah, cool. All right. Drive safe, buddy. You know, I'm like, was I not reckless driving or no, I'm kidding. But it has happened a few times where I was speeding or um, you know, didn't do a full stop at a stop sign and they wouldn't give me a ticket. And, uh, so yeah, but, um, what, but the other thing is too, with, with camera based ticketing systems is, and it's like, the thing is no one I think is inherently looking to speed and, and just like break the law as an Uber driver. But when you drive all day, every day, and you're constantly picking and dropping people off, you're not going to notice if you're five, 10 miles an hour over. That's what happens to me all the time is I just don't notice, you know? So, I mean, if I'm on the highway, I go, I go, I put on cruise control, but if I'm on a road where the speed limit's 45, I would say there's a good chance I'm going 55, but I don't, I don't realize it, you know? And I don't say that to like incriminate myself. I really am unsure, but like, I know there's been times where I was accidentally speeding because you just zone out, you know? But, um, so all that, like, for me, like, it was just something I started thinking about a lot. I was like, you know, my odds of something happening are just a lot higher than anyone else. And it's just the reality, unfortunately. But um, the next thing I think is over time, you start to add up how much money you're really making. Once you start really recording the right way, looking at all your expenses and adding things up, uh, most people report that they learned they only are making about $12 an hour. So you think you're making 20 all this time. And then once you add it all up, you're making more like 12. Now, what I feel like is you usually make $5 an hour less than what you think. So if you make 20, I would guess you're making 15. But on average, I believe the average driver's earnings are like 17 to 18 per hour. Um, and that's, you know, adding up all the weekdays. I feel like when you ask an Uber driver, they always tell you what, what they're uh, like, what they make per hour on a weekend. Like I've asked the last few guys, I'm like, so how good do you do on this gig? You know, acting like I've never done it. They're like, oh, it's amazing money, bro. 25 an hour constantly. And I like rolled my eyes in my head. I was like, maybe on the weekend, but I know that if you're driving any other day of the week, you're not making 25 an hour. We Uber drivers, we really like to like stunt on people. I've noticed. <laughs> it's... Um, but the next, um, I would say the next, uh, reason is it changes things and to put what I would say is like because this is one of the things that happened to me and I went through a phase where I quit because of this but I I started it originally to give me time to act to start a business to do a lot of things that were on my heart that I didn't have the flexibility to do but what happened after a while was Uber became the number one priority and it was so much of a security blanket that I stopped doing the things that really mattered and I kind of just became an Uber driver for a while. So I think for a lot of people, they hit a point where they're like, you know, what am I really doing here? You know? And so it just kind of makes sense to quit then. But that's another thing. I think the only thing you need to like think about in terms of that is know why you're doing this, you know? So for me, I wanted the flexibility to be an actor and I wanted to start my own business and I wanted to really just have the freedom to do whatever I wanted. So rather than planning my Uber schedule 
at the beginning of each week. I planned my audition times and then I planned times where I worked on my business and then the rest of the time was for Ubering. And as long as you put your other things first, it'll always be a side gig. But I think where a lot of people go wrong is eventually they think, you know, oh, I'm going to grind this week and make X amount of money. And then I'm going to grind next week and make X amount of money. And then I'll be using that money to then invest into my career. But then you usually don't. You usually have some bills that come up. Something comes up where you can't then do that. So my thing is you need to make sure you're having the appropriate time for the things you need to do each week because otherwise you'll become just an Uber driver. And the reality is that won't um, that won't bring any level of gratification towards your soul, the reason that you wanted to do this stuff in the first place. And so you'll hit this point where you feel pointless. You feel like you're just an Uber driver, you know? And if you are just an Uber driver, I hope you didn't interpret that as me frowning on that. I'm saying that I think a lot of the reason why people quit is they started it for a passion that, and they never really got to live their passion by doing this. Makes sense? Um, I think a lot of people too, they just, it's a lot more demanding than they realize. Like when you imagine this, and let's be honest, it is really easy. I would take doing this over being in a coal mining shaft. Um, you know, so let's not play it off as this very difficult job. But I think some people think it really is just like a kick back, relax, give a few rides, everybody's happy. And then you start learning that it's not really like that. Um, I would say another reason are pay expectations. You know, I think everyone assumes they're going to start this and make like 30 an hour because there's some Craigslist ad they clicked where someone was like, have the flexibility of your dream and make 30 an hour. And they're like, oh my God, it really is that great. <laughs> so, but I'm going to cut the video off there, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't get burned out. Do the things you need to do. Keep your priorities straight. Um, let me know if you guys got any topics you want me to cover and I will talk to you all soon.